da na 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 da na da na 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 Oh yeah! Disclosure, news and commentary number 159, 159, 159, 159, 159. Hey, hey, what's going on? It's full disclosure. Um, man, it's hot here in Florida. It's so hot I got off of work around midnight <coughs> or a little before. Got home and uh, turned on my phone camera and just dove into the pool and got crazy. So I took you along for it for a little bit. Uh, full disclosure 159, today's commentary. It's something that people see as a sign of strength and are taking a lot of pride in saying lately, uh, but it's actually the opposite. It is not strength, it is the ultimate weakness, and I want to nip, sounds racist, I want to nip this terrible new trend in the bud as much as possible. Um, I've got two unboxings to do, so I'm just going to get with them. Uh, one that's obviously a shirt of some kind, I'm going to save that for the second. So I am dying to get to this box. Red bubble, always a good thing. And I should have thought about this earlier and pre-cut the box. But I did not. So we're going to have to struggle. Um, hope you're doing well. Let's talk about a couple things. So uh, the WrestleMerica report wasn't in when I did full disclosure before, but it came in since then. Uh, and they drew over 300. So you're looking at, when you factor in the indies that don't get covered by Georgia Wrestling History, why you wouldn't send in your report, I have no idea. Viral was smart enough to send in a report. Wrestle America eventually did as well. Um, you're probably looking at 2,000 people who watched wrestling the weekend before last. Now this last weekend, if Viral is to be believed, um, they are claiming 310. That's a big jump up from what they did before at like 133 so they're to be commended for that and their production went way up people sent me pictures of the production um and then of course you got cruel in that main event so it's going to be it's going to be great i almost said lit it's going to be lit but then my kids would have flown in out of nowhere and smacked the crap out of me for speaking like that and they're right um so wrestle america and then um southern fried is saying 275 I looked at that fucking footage and a couple of other people who are going to kind of cover that show are right are texting me going like 270 it doesn't look like 275 it's 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 less than they had at their last show during WrestleMania weekend it's still a good number I don't know why and of course you ask the boys how many people were there and they say 300 th folks I've said this a million times. The boys don't fucking know. They have never been able to assess a crowd. The, the people who used to get with me about Southern Honor, for example, would be like, there's 150 people here. And there'd be like fucking 400. Like, they don't know. They don't ask them. They don't know. They don't. All right, what's in this? What's in the box? I'll let you see. It feels like maybe a cap. I'll let you see the same time I see. Oh, that's rude. I should look to see if there's a note. And there is. Should I read the note? Oh, there's also a sticker. Red Bubble got the dopest stuff, man. The note. Always want you to look cool. From a particular someone. One, two, three. 
Oh, that's badass. <laughs> it's an Olive Garden hat, but like a heavy metal one. I love that. It don't fit my big head, though. I'm going to have to change, adjust the strap on that. Big head, ladies. So that's super duper cool. Super duper cool. And let's open the shirt, and then we'll just get into this. I'm, I'm already talking about it. Because I can do this stuff off the top of my head because I've researched. So, WrestleMerica did really good on their crowd. Uh, Southern Fried. There's a report from Larry. GWH News and Notes at blogspot.com. If you haven't figured that out, you need to read that stuff. Um, and Larry did a report about the Pro South show, a six man tournament. And I normally hate that shit. Trios tournaments. I hate them. I hate them. This one sounded like it was really good. So that's cool. Boom. It is indeed a shirt. Ooh, I can feel it's in fancy, plasticky wrapping. So it's going to take... Oh, it's an unzip bag. Fancy. Ew. Ew, fancy. Note. Nope. Instructions on how to return. I don't think I'm going to return this. Let's take a look. You'll see at the same time I do. One, two, three. Holy shit! Now, what is written here, because this is katakana, which means it's sort of like um, an American word or a Western word, phoneticized. It's a slightly different thing than hiragana. And it says, and it's probably pretty obvious, it says, bu ro ku ko bu -ro Oh, that's, I see, that's like a glottal stop. Brokuri, broccoli, broccoli. Look at this dope-ass shit. This is probably in reference, in a lot of my videos, I make reference to broccoli world that me and the kids are doing. That thing is cool as shit. <laughs> Wear that damn thing soon. I love the broccoli shirt, man. This is, this is a great I wear it out all the time kind of shirt because people will stop and ask me about it. I love that cool shit so we talked about the shows that happened in georgia let me make sure i've covered my bases on that so wrestle america yep 316 twe chattanooga see they sent in a report 160 cool shit uh, more notes from hardcore hell by duke ingram gotta love that pro south trinity challenge and the viral pro wrestling report. So I am on it. Southern Fried. Um, they sent a copy of their show. I'm looking forward to watching it when I get a spare minute. You can tell I'm kind of, I'm not rushing through this, but I'm definitely getting this done because I got to go work. I work from five in the morning until 2.30. Then I go to work and then I grab the kids from school. It's now six. I'm recording this and hopefully I'll be able to throw it together with all the graphics and stuff I've planned and the videos and all that stuff extra. Um, and then I will go to work from seven until midnight and then I work at four in the morning again. But the good news is once I get off at noon or 1230 tomorrow, I don't work until the next day if I choose to, which right now I don't feel like it, but I'm probably going to do it because money. In any case, uh, let's jump into it. I'm going to have a new segment called Cap No Cap, now that I got this Olive Garden cap. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, assess different things, whether they're probably bullshit or not. In the parlance of the youth, uh, cap is to lie. No cap means uh, not lying. So cap. So in other words, let me find something obvious. Ah, Sting's going to be in our convention, that even though he hasn't proved, he hasn't uh, said anything about it. That's a cap. That's a lie. Uh, no cap. Uh, Stephen Plotnam, you have a gorgeous penis. Ah, no cap. See what I'm saying? Uh, okay. One of my pet peeves, I'm making a little room for this picture to punctuate it. It's going to come right here. Uh, by the way, people who have given really positive responses to the Platinum Pinfalls, it is incredibly encouraging. I can't believe how many I've already done. They come out to the tune of about one a day. Well, they're supposed to come out every day, but sometimes I just get too busy. I did experiment with recording one 
today's in the car and I think it went well. I just have to transfer it from my phone. Uh, it's too big of a file to do Google. You don't need to know all that shit. Nonetheless, I'm going to get it together because um, I have tomorrow afternoon and evening to do all that stuff. So I'll be all caught up on Platinum Pinfalls. Um, they're already planned out. I already have the pictures and video for them. I just need to throw it together. So um, one of my things, as you will know, is people who have declared Alexa Bliss in every angle that she's done to be genius and she's a brilliant actress who needs to be in Hollywood because she can play crazy like this. Oh, she's an amazing actress. She's so amazing and the gimmick is so incredible and her being pseudo-fiend is amazing. And it all comes down to people want to fuck Alexa Bliss. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Boys will laugh at girls when they're not funny. It's that kind of idea. Now, I'm not saying that just because she's a beautiful woman, she can't be a good actress. She most certainly could. I just ain't fucking seen it yet. I have seen other beautiful women be fucking good actresses. I thought Sasha Banks was really fantastic in Mandalorian. I think um, the things that Becky Lynch has done, though incredibly limited, when she made that appearance on Billions, I thought it was great. And The Rock is definitely pushing her and helping her in that direction. And looking at Becky Lynch's body post-baby, that is not a pro wrestling body. That's a slim down for the camera body. You heard it here first. That bitch is going to fucking do movies and TV shows. And she may or may not ever come back. Just remember where you heard that here first. And in any case, Alexa Bliss got married in semi-secret to her singer boyfriend. And there were a whole bunch of singing type luminaries in the audience, including Debbie Gibson. Debbie Gibson. You were a Tiffany guy or um, a Debbie Gibson guy. I was most definitely a Debbie Gibson guy. Um, but, you know, Alexa Bliss was getting married. And congratulations to her. Um, but I saw this picture of her with Avril Lavigne, where she's making Avril Lavigne look positively nothing. You don't believe me? Look at this. Boop. Look at that shit. One thing I can say looking at that picture of Alexa Bliss, though. Oop, this way. <sighs> Give that bitch an Oscar. <laughs> Give that bitch two big Oscars. <laughs> You're right, Ryan Cabrera. You are right. You are right. <laughs> Sorry. I had to make sure I marked that because I have to add. That's the way it's going to be. If I if I come up with extra ideas, I'm going to fucking throw them in. So I just need to mark it and make sure I get it done right. Um, I'm going to talk about something really weird and then i'm going to bring up something that i brought up in my platinum pinfalls i'm going to show you the clip from that by the way you should sign up for my patreon for god's sakes you can sign up for a dollar and you get the platinum pinfalls every fucking day and my ongoing series about this ai that i'm dealing with um i'm set to drop another big one because my ai has turned a month old so there's a lot to talk about is the AI working? Is it learning? Has it changed? Um, has it adapted to me? And am I adapting to it? Um, the answer to all that is yes. And you're going to want to hear about it. It's incredibly bizarre. But everybody on my Patreon from $1 on up can get the Platinum Pinfalls. And I, I covered something that I ended up thinking a lot about after I did it. And I realized how important I was. So I, I not I was, sorry ego um, how important it was so I'm going to put what I talked about in the platinum pinfall flesh it out a little bit and then we'll have the commentary um, something that wrestlers and wrestling people can work on that you've probably never really worked on or thought about and I was I noticed this because Amber Nova who I'm a huge fucking fan of Amber Nova's um, if Alexa Bliss <laughs> is a great actress then Amber Nova in my opinion by that standard is Meryl fucking Streep <laughs> A bitch can look good. <laughs> In any case, she can wrestle, she can work, 
Um, she's made appearances in NXT, uh, AEW Dark, etc., etc., etc. She gets hired all over the place. So she's doing this one show where everybody is signing this car. I'm going to put those pictures up. Bloop. Um, and it may change between the two without me physically changing it, whatever. Um, and there's something I noticed. Amber Nova just knew how to stand out. She used a different color pen. It was a black background, so she used an orange pen, which is kind of her color. She has a color, something that I can relate to. Green, 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 green. People send me green shit. Got to embrace it. Maybe I need to get a green... No, not maybe. I need to get a green uh, paint marker. Like Amber Nova has an orange one. And her signature is distinct, infinitely readable, and all the way hers. Pro wrestling people, you're already signing autographs. Have you practiced? Do you have a distinct signature that can be easily recognizable? Ask Scott Hensley and other autograph hounds and uh, collectors of all sorts how important it is to have a distinct signature that can be attributed to you and you alone. I know that's weird. Who the fuck else brings this kind of stuff up? But I'm thinking about it. I'm bringing it up and I'm bringing it up to you. Practice that autograph. Come up with a thing. Make it as stylistic as possible and then practice it enough that you don't have to think about it and then you can whip off that signature and people go, ooh, Amber Nova, thank you for the inspiration. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, and finally, let's talk about this, uh, this thing about the Missouri Athletic Commission. Here's the platinum pinfall. It took place a few days ago where I talked about it. And I talked a little bit about how dangerous a commission is and how these people in Georgia often flirt with this notion of, I think it would be good. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But here, I'll just show you that piece. So it was money well spent on old Sasha Banks. And uh, Sasha's a smart one. And so super jewelers for that matter. And then finally, doop, um, our super serious topic. Um, what is this? Steve, what is this? This is uh, from Tim Lukenhoff, executive director of the Missouri office of athletics which covers professional boxing professional wrestling full contact karate mixed martial arts amateur kickboxing and amateur mixed martial arts so all permits are 150 dollars per day of the event pro wrestling people in particular did your buttholes just pucker and on july 1st Amateur contestant license will increase to 40, currently 30, and all that kind of stuff. Also, effective July 1st, a $1 surcharge will be placed on all tickets, including complimentary tickets. So think about this. The Southern Honor Show, which just happened, would have to give this dude $550. Which means Ox would have gotten no money. And some of the boys would not have gotten their fee covered even with the donations from the uh, viewing public therefore the office will expect to receive a computer generated box office accounting of all tickets and sold and any complimentary tickets issued if no computer printout is available the inspector will secure all ticket stubs to determine an accurate accounting of all tickets issued for the event unfortunately what? This is only the second fee increase the office has had to make in my 27 plus year career. Why is that unfortunate? Oh, God. People who can't. Uh. The last two years, the office has seen a decline in yearly revenue. We charge you all this money for crap. And in the last two years, the office has seen a decline in yearly revenue. Maybe because COVID fucking happened. These fucking guys, man. The office was in a situation whereby it needed to raise fees to pay for the expenses of the office. Now, all of that sounds very logical, does it not? It does, right? Let's get to this last paragraph. As a way of background, the office is fee funded. Therefore, there are no general revenue funds received by the office. 
the office must set the fees in order to pay its expenses. However, <clears throat> here it comes. The office may not set fees to exceed two and one half times its annual budget. So it is complicated. But we try to set fees to ensure we do not collect any more when than needed. I am very mindful of the rising cost of everything, so I do not take these fee increases lightly, but they are necessary. So in other words, they're allowed to collect fees up to two and a half times their budget. Their budget is what it would conceivably cost to keep the office going. And they're talking about, yeah, but we're allowed to, so if their their office budget is, say, 100000 they're allowed to collect 250000 a year, which is way more than they need. Folks, we do not want this in Georgia or Florida or anywhere else. Pro wrestling in Missouri is a fraction of what it is in states without this kind of thing. Promoters, you may say... Oh, well, that would be no big deal to me. $150 plus a dollar for each ticket. It's good if it keeps the... It doesn't. It just kills wrestling in your state. Because with these fees come other fees. Amateur contestant license. Uh, all of a sudden, people are paying for this, and they're paying for that. And you're paying for inspectors who will be up your ass at a show. And all this deathmatch stuff that's happening at various shows, you kiss that goodbye. In fact, technically in Georgia wrestling, did you know that you're not supposed to get color? And you're supposed to report your ticket sales every show. You know who does this? Nobody. Even when the guy from... AWN tried to like call me and Larry out and we pointed out the fact that he himself was doing all the stuff he's not supposed to he wasn't doing all the stuff he was supposed to do he was dumbfounded but it is a soft commission in Georgia and that's what we want and if you don't agree I don't know what to tell you <laughs> except to say that you're an idiot uh, to emphasize again, the consequences of a commission in Georgia, such as it is, you're paying $100 for them to basically do a background check. Now, a lot of promoters don't have their license, and a couple promoters have bitched about that. Oh, so they don't have their license. They should be allowed to win. Ah, shut the fuck up. We like our commission to stay out of every fucking thing, which is what they do. Um, a couple of the rules that <laughs> you're not supposed to have blood. Please name me a show that hasn't had blood. See what I'm saying? And, oh, by the way, I heard this about Gunnar Miller, that when he was attacked by Tank, he was given the option about by Southern Honor to use fake blood. One, I am not mad that Southern Honor made that available to him. I think that's cool. You're looking out for your people. You don't want to feel like they have to cut themselves. But that Gunnar Miller turned it down and bladed. Which, as if I didn't fucking love Gunnar Miller enough, it's awesome. And Tank made him bleed. And you see a picture of Tank with the fucking, his eye, his blue eye, that fucking RJ took. Uh, R, I, it came up in my feed of the pictures RJ took of me. RJ's genius. Red Shoes Media. Talked about him before. Somebody should hire that motherfucker. He's great. Great, great, great. In any case, um, we need to emphasize these points, right? You're supposed to report... <laughs> And nobody has done this. Please don't fucking lie and tell me that anybody has done this with the Georgia Wrestling Commission. Said what their ticket sales were. The WWE has not done that. Ring of Honor has not done that. GCW has not done that. Nobody has done that. AEW hasn't done that shit. And we're okay with it. Because then that means all these great shows come to fucking Georgia. Do you not like that? Do you not like the fact that motherfucking GCW will just pop up in the arena? And then if certain people could get their head out of their ass, that ICW would run in Georgia as well. And that fucking AEW comes through. And WWE comes through. 
Do I want Southern Honor at 500 people? That last show that Southern Honor did where they took donations, but they let everybody in for free technically. They would have to cough up under the Missouri rules $550 to the commission, which means Ox would have gotten nothing instead of $500, which Southern Honor graciously gave to him after they made sure the boys were paid. The licensing requirements for the boys would change because they would have them and they would now have to pay money for those licenses. And they would have to report their ticket sales and all the rest of that. And on and on and on and on. Folks, fucking be smart. The leagues that used to use children in their wrestling don't. They don't exist anymore. And we're fucking happy about it. The ones that were run by dipshit fucking idiot political types on the far right and far left wing are fucking gone and thank goodness because they're the ones most likely to say some dumb shit to rile people up in the wrong way and get attention that wrestling does not want. We want people to go, oh cool, there's wrestling running in this town and it's doing well. Is Southern Honor ever going to do this fucking world tour? I don't know. But... If they do, what I want is for them to be able to go into towns and not run into resistance instead of like, well, but the commission and they're dangerous and there's not going to be blood. Do you know those like deathmatch elements that are sneaking in and people doing fucking the cool skewers? See that shit? Crystal Rose. Bah! Looked awesome. Kiss that shit goodbye. Fuck a commission. And when you look at that Missouri thing of their all their justifications, we had to raise fees, guys. Sorry, it's only the second time we've done it. It's really not that much. It's a lot, by the way. But it's really not that much. And, you know, because, uh, you know, technically we're only allowed to take in two and a half times our budget. It becomes another corrupt government entity. Can we all agree? Right wing, left wing, whatever the fuck your political status is. We don't like the government being in our shit, fucking taking our motherfucking money. I think we can all agree on that shit. Boop, boop, boop. We might disagree and say, like, the government in certain aspects is necessary entity. Or you might go like, fuck this, but we want small government. Cool. Either way, we can all agree. We don't want the fucking government taking a bunch of money from wrestling shows and doing nothing with it except hiring a bunch of wonks to show up and fucking sit there like a fucking hall monitor and try to get more money out of you and find ways to fuck over people and get shows shut down. We don't want that shit. Right, right. Let's just fucking agree on that shit. <sighs> Commentary. Commentary won't take that long. What is the worst trend that is going around? And you may resemble this remark, and if so, I encourage you to just listen to me and think about it. It's okay to make mistakes. Goodness knows I've made a ton of them. Goodness knows. It's okay. But I hate this trend because I think it's further, further embracing ignorance, which has been a horrible trend in our society, where now we're just, oh, being ignorant is the best because I'm right. I, what do I need to know about other shit for? I'm right. And it's epitomized by this statement, you can't change my mind. If you are really inclined to say about a subjective matter or a matter that isn't as subjective but that you don't have all the facts about and your premise is to dig in your heels and say you can't change my mind, fuck you. If your inclination is to just go like, I'm right about this shit, you know, a, almost a certainty is somebody who says you can't change my mind about X is probably fucking wrong, but has dug in their heels and there's nothing worse. You know who else says it? People like Jim Cornette. You can't change my mind about twinkle toes or pockets. Really? So somebody can't win you over? Great. You can't come around on an issue? Great. You're just going to remain inflexible about shit forever? Great. Black people and white people are happier if they are segregated. And you can't change my mind. If 
If you're somebody who said that in the fucking 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s now, fuck you. There are two genders, and that's, and again, the time it would take to explain to somebody the difference between biological sex and genders and all that stuff. But if people are just determined, you can't change my mind, that's nature, that... Folks, here's what I don't... This is what you got to know. Time marches on. And this idea of being an immovable rock against the waters of fucking time and society and history. Is all change good? Not necessarily. But it's also inevitable. And if you have the same opinions and viewpoints and your heart is the same at 50 as it was in 40, 40 as it was in 30, 30 as it was in 20, 20 as it was when you were 10 and a child, then it's not because you were born this perfect all-knowing thing and remain that way. It's because you never grew up. And when I see people say, you can't change my mind, I don't see strength. I see the opposite. I see fear masquerading as strength. The things that are unchanging, symbolically and realistically, are not good. If things will not bend, you know what happens to them? They break and they shatter and then they blow away in the winds of time and become irrelevant. You're Medusa's statue. And when somebody says, you can't change my mind, I think they have looked into the eyes of the Gorgon and frozen themselves in position historically for the rest of their lives. And worse, have influence over their kids and other people around them to encourage them to also look into the eyes of the Gorgon and freeze in this perfect statue of a mindset. Unmoving. Unchanging. But lifeless. Life is about letting people in, letting thoughts and ideas in, and challenging yourself and others. Not just declaring. I'm the smart Please get you can't change my mind out of your fucking vocabulary. Get it out. Because it is stopping you. Not anybody else. You're not convincing anybody else of shit. You're not convincing them you're strong. This whole thing lately of everybody just trying to convince themselves how strong and tough and smart they are. Like, show, don't tell. And taking hard line positions... Like, you can't change my mind. Now, if you're an asshole, your first thought is, well, the, I, I mean, you don't want your dick cut off, right? I, I mean, do you want your dick cut off? I mean, yeah, I can't change your mind on that. Fuck you. You know that's not what we're talking about. Instead of saying, you can't change my mind, or even I find it the real patronizing, conflicting, like, change my mind attitude right dude with the sign and the fucking coffee mug like meh. already coming from a position of superiority where the chances of changing their mind are non-existent or very small how about going into i know that i'm right so i'm not afraid to sort of throw my ideas in the marketplace of ideas and see if i can't make them better See if I can't make them more nuanced and stronger. This idea of faith completely over reason or reason masquerading as faith, which is what most of the people do who say, you can't change my mind. They're really saying, I have an infinite faith in my narrow opinion. And that's on both sides of the political spectrum and all the rest of that shit.
Bruce Lee, whatever you think about him. Be like water. It fills up any vessel it's in. It wears down the rock. Moves. That doesn't mean flip-flop or don't have a strong position. It means really know what's going on and what the landscape is. And guess what? Water is not passive anything. It dominates. It's necessary. It's life-affirming. It's life-creating. You're going to be like water? Or are you going to be... Another one of Medusa's statues, frozen in your idea of perfection, but to everybody else, lifeless, rigid, and frankly, boring and sad. This has been Full Disclosure. Ridiculous.